In 1941, 11-year-old Warren Buffett spent $114 of his own money, which was pretty much all the money he had at the time, to buy himself three shares of City Service Preferred Stock. Now today, Warren Buffett is worth $114 billion. What happened in the meantime? I just got done reading the essays of Warren Buffett, which is a collection of his letters to shareholders, and there were a bunch of great nuggets of wisdom in there. The stock market can seem intimidating to people, partially because that's kind of how Wall Street people set it up. But once you understand it, it becomes less about being smart and more about being disciplined. As Warren Buffett said, if you're investing in the stock market and you have 60 IQ points, sell 30 of them to somebody else because you won't need them. Most people who invest in stocks spend a lot of time thinking about stuff like, you know, when am I going to sell my shares? What's my target price? Is the Federal Reserve going to raise interest rates? What's going to happen in the macroeconomy, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And Warren Buffett says that all this stuff is a distraction. He says that the best investment philosophy is simple. You buy good businesses and then you hold them and you do nothing. He says that buying stocks is just like buying any other business. You analyze the business, you figure out how much it's worth, and if you're getting it at a discount, you buy it. One of the things that Warren Buffett's really good at, that most people are terrible at, is staying in his zone of competence, right? He knows what he's good at, and he doesn't try and do anything else. Probably the most famous example of that is how he predicted the dot-com crash. Uh, he got up at this conference for all these rich people, and he gave this speech and said, hey, you know, all these tech companies you're investing in are way overvalued, and they're not going to make any money at the end of the day, and you're going to lose all your money. And they were all like, oh, yeah, you know, Warren, you're out of touch, you're behind the times, you don't know how the stock market works these days, yada, yada, yada. And then the dot-com bubble burst, and all those people lost all their money, and Warren Buffett didn't lose any money because he didn't invest in tech companies. Another way that he stays in his zone of competence is that he doesn't really try to manage the businesses that he invests in. You know, there, there are rare exceptions to this, like when he had to take over Salomon Brothers, but usually he looks for businesses with really good managers in place and then lets them continue to manage the company exactly as they've been managing the company. And I think that people have a bias towards doing something rather than doing nothing. And it takes a lot of wisdom to set aside that bias and say, hey, you know, I can't do this properly, I'm going to let the people who actually know what they're doing do this. Another way that Warren Buffett's different from the average CEO, the average you know, investment firm, is that he goes above and beyond to be honest, right? Most CEOs, when they release earnings reports, they just and, and letters to shareholders, they just kind of write PR jargon, right? They have their public relations department spin up something that's not going to offend anybody, and not really going to say anything valuable. And Warren Buffett always took the opposite approach. In his letters to shareholders, he basically teaches people about how Berkshire Hathaway works. He, he gives them the information that they need to know to make a good investment decision. Warren Buffett even went so far as to admit his mistakes, which basically no one else on Wall Street or in corporate America would ever have done. Today we're finding out that being open and honest with people beyond the bare minimum is actually a really good business strategy. And the reason is because it builds your credibility, right? When you're teaching people how stuff works, then they look at you as an expert. And on the internet, that's called content marketing, right? A lot of people have grown their businesses by just telling people about their industry. One of the things that Warren Buffett would do in his shareholder letters is he would actually mock Wall Street and satirize it, right? He would say, you know, these are all the shady things they're doing. These are how, you know, their morals have gotten worse over the past decades. And it must have been very disappointing for him to, you know, throughout his life, watch Wall Street people and CEOs of big corporations consistently get stuff wrong over and over again, consistently mislead people over and over again. The irony is that doing stuff like selling bad financial products or propping up your business's share price with CD accounting methods is only really going to work in the short term. But the problem is that you know, the short term is all that Wall Street people need to fleece the little guy, right? The way Warren Buffett puts it is, eventually the truth will surface, but in the meantime, a lot of money will change hands. Another thing that Warren Buffett makes fun of in his shareholder letters is the mathematical models that financial people use to measure risk, right? He talks about, you know, beta is not a good way of measuring risk, because beta, like beta is basically, if you, if you don't know, it's the, the way that stock prices fluctuate. Like the beta of a stock is how much it's fluctuated by in the past. 
And Warren Buffett says, you know, the fluctuations don't really matter. What matters is, you know, how how good is the company, right? Like, is the company going to go bankrupt or not? And the irony is that a stock that goes way down in price, like its beta is going to go up, but it might be a better investment because it's at a lower price. Most of the models that Wall Street people use to evaluate stocks uh, don't pay that much attention to qualitative factors. Usually they completely ignore them altogether. And Warren Buffett says that that's really dumb because qualitative factors matter, right? Just because you can't measure them doesn't mean that you can just ignore them. The way Warren Buffett puts it is, it's better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. If you're casually interested in investing, I highly, highly, highly recommend reading a lot of the stuff that Warren Buffett has written about the subject because, well, there are two reasons. The first is that he explains it in a way that's pretty simple, right? If you read what Wall Street people write about investing, you know, they'll put it in all these, you know, complex jargon terms and they'll show you all these mathematical formulas that you won't understand. And part of the reason why they do it is to make it seem more complicated so that you feel like you have to rely on them, right? Whereas Warren Buffett, he'll just tell you like, oh yeah, all this stuff that Wall Street people do, total BS, you know, ignore it, just focus on this stuff. And then second is Warren Buffett's investment framework. You don't have to be that smart to understand it and do well with it. You just have to be disciplined, right? If you can pick eight stocks that you like and then completely ignore everything that happens in the stock market for a year or two, you will outperform most casual investors. So that's it for today's Theo's Book Club. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new here, my name's Theo. I make short videos like this one, going over the big ideas in the books that I read so that you can learn what I learned and so that you can decide whether to read the book for yourself. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. Just you know, click down below. That'll help YouTube realize that these are good videos that they should show to other people, which I would greatly appreciate because I'm growing this channel. Also, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to see my pretty face pop up in your feed more often. And I hope you have a great day.